Hey everybody, it's Andy. Welcome. It's Tuesday morning to my careers and coffee show. Great to have you. Love this time of day. Love this time of week. Gonna give you a hand with your career. So get in the chat. Tell me where you're from. Tell me what you need. Put some question marks in front of your in front of your questions. If you are in one of my programs, please let me know. Give me a hashtag, your little medallion sign. Tell me, tell me what you uh, partake in. I uh, I always love to give you a shout out. Always want and also want to know what assets you have at your disposal. So if I give you any insight, I know where I can point you. So it's Tuesday. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch the video I put out on crafting a perfect networking message. We're going to talk for a few minutes about that. We're going to spend most of the hour on your questions, but I wanted to call out a few things that I thought were kind of special in uh, in that in that video. We we released it a bit earlier than normal cuz it was a 20 minute video. So hopefully you had a chance to take that in. I highlighted seven points that I think uh, really pieces of of uh, there's some different things. It's content. It's 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 words that connect you to the person you're sending it to. It's words that will entice the other party to respond to you because ultimately, when we are networking as it relates to job searching, uh, I know it can be a little bit tough because you're in a position where you're going to need to ask for some help pretty much right out of the shoot. So hopefully you had a chance to see that. I am going to take a big swig of this. I got my Buffalo Plaid coffee cup this morning. I'm sporting the Benny Reyes uh, made bear uh, bracelet that I'm, I'm wearing proudly and clutching onto. It's kind of a, even though they were up 28 nothing in the first half, it was still kind of a nail biter. Only my bears can do that. Mm. So I, uh, I'm, I'm, but I'm glad they pulled it out at least. All right, so let's talk about Let's talk about the the message. I'm not going to go through all seven points, but there's there's two things I want to I want to mention about that video. I want you to really keep in mind if you've already watched it, it might even be worth running through it again and paying extra special attention to these couple of points. There is when you are when you are networking with with someone. Uh, let's let's not even cover the scenarios where you know they're 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 relationships that you have. Maybe they're 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 medium warm, maybe they're lukewarm, maybe they're smoldering hot. I don't know, but if 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 you're trying to reach out to somebody where you are sending a cold email message, there are a couple of things that you absolutely need to do that are vital in order to raise your odds of getting a response because ultimately that's what we're trying to do when we're networking. We need to get some type of response so we can carry on the conversation. So I wanna hit that. And then I also, uh, not doing that is is really the biggest mistake. And then I, I do wanna talk about the second biggest mistake that I think people make as well. So really, what I want you to do and what I want you to avoid, that's really all I wanna hit this morning. If you noticed in the video and I talked about you know, you, obviously, you need to let them know who you are. But one of the most vital things when you when you're messaging somebody is the personal connection that you make with them. If you are reaching out to somebody that you do not know, you have precious moments to figure out how do I make that impression on them so that number one, they keep reading my message. And number two, they actually want to respond. And the easiest thing for you to do that is going to make the other party want to engage with you is to make sure that you are personalizing it for them. So why did you reach out to them? That's one of the first things that you got to get out in the message. What that does is it shows them that this is a -a one-of-a-kind message for them. There is a reason I chose you specifically. The more generic that email is, the less likely somebody's going to respond. So, Andy, I chose you because you are a career coach and it appears that you specialize in my area. Okay, that's great. Now I understand that you're not sending this to any human being that is a career coach, right? So so there is some type of connection that lets me know why me? People want to know why me? Why are you reaching out to me? That's usually the first thing that they're that they're considering. The second thing that also personalizes it and makes a connection is the fact that you have done extra work 
I've done homework, I've done research, I've noticed these things about your company, or I came across this and it made me think about that. Anything else that you can add that further emphasizes that you did your homework and you spent time and effort, that really raises the bar. Those two things, I, those were points number two and points number four in the video. Those two things, when I open the email as somebody who does not know you, when I see language like that, it tells me that you are not somebody who sent this boilerplate email to a whole bunch of people in the hope that somebody gets back to you. You're telling me, Andy, I'm sending you this one-of-a-kind email to you in the hope you get back to me. That is the most important thing in eliciting a response in a job search networking message. Please make sure you loop those a couple times. There's a, there's, a, there's a piece in the middle of the video where I go back and forth between these two, steps two and four. You got to make sure that that stuff is in there. And then, and this is, so not including that and not making that personal connection is the biggest, is really, is the most important ingredient. And if you don't do it, it's the biggest mistake. It's the biggest mistake. I, I, I cannot stand when I get emails that don't have anything specific about me other than, hi Andy. Or the LinkedIn emails that I immediately get after connection requests that give me a boilerplate about how I'm somebody from, you know, who, who needs help and I can immediately see it's a form, it's a form letter. Whether it's somebody who's, who's searching for a job or for me, a lot of times I get uh, people on LinkedIn who want to sell me their services where they, you know, they can take my social media to the, you know, 10 times level or whatever they're touting. But I can see it's just some generic boilerplate to have no clue what I do or who I am. Nothing's a bigger turnoff. Then the other thing is, on the other side of the spectrum is, when you close up that message, you need to make sure that you are telling them specifically what it is that you need and the next step to take. I'd love to hear from you. I, I, I need a referral to. I'm wondering if you know anybody at. Whatever it is, it should be specific. The more specific it is, the greater the likelihood that you will get a response. Remember, the goal in the message initially is to get a response. You can always go from there. But if you get silence, that's not going to help. So even if I need to turn around and say, I don't know anybody at that company, I don't know anybody in that market, I don't know whatever, I can get back to you and tell you that, which is likely what, what will happen, and then you can get back to me and broaden up your questions so you can continue the dialogue. So I just, I want to make sure that you guys are really, really catching that. Those are three of the, of the big seven things that need to be in there, but you've got to make sure that you are making that connection. If the person does not feel connected to you, they are likely not going to respond or at least not respond anytime soon. And if they don't know specifically what you need and it's not myopic enough for them to respond quickly, it's likely going to either, either, either you delay the response like the story I told you about Brian in the video or... They're going to push it to the side and say, well, I'll get back to that later and then never get back to it. So I just, I don't want that to be you. Uh, I, I, I just, I, I, I really, I really gave you some good points in that video. Check it out. Uh, hope you enjoy it. If you got any questions either on that video, you know, if you're on that video, put them in the comments on that video or drop them in the chat here. We're going to go to the chat here. I just, I wanted to spend the first couple minutes saying hello, letting you know about that video, what was, you know, what I think were the really, really key points that I would pay particular attention to. If you have not seen that video yet, check it out. Pay extra special attention to that. But so there's the seven points. There's a story in there about the specificity of the request and all that's pretty, pretty good one. And it's a bit, it's a bit longer than the last few weeks have been. But, uh, but I think it's, I think it's a really good one. I think you'll enjoy it. And make sure to hit the thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe. I always forget to say that. All right. How are we doing? I got my chat popped out. I got my coffee. Verun, my Canadian friend, how you doing? Mm. Hey, speaking of, um, a couple of like weird odds and ends for you guys. Uh, we, we, we use an email system, obviously, to communicate with a lot of you that are on the, on our, in our email list who downloaded stuff or subscribed to my newsletter and things like that. 
we have been getting alerts from our email provider. This is not specific to Milewalk and the Milewalk Academy. Just the, the, the provider itself said that they are having some issues with uh, getting our, our, our emails and all their other customers to uh, Hotmail accounts, Outlook.com accounts, and Windmail accounts. If you have a Hotmail account, or you have a, um, a windmail or an outlook.com and you are not getting my regular, you know, a good, good sign is you're not getting my regularly scheduled Tuesday morning email that normally comes out at 6.30 a.m. Central Time, although we've been moving it earlier because there have been server delays and other things. We want to make sure you're getting those. Or my Thursday email where I, where I give you a little friendly tap on the shoulder that I'm going to be at live office hours. If you're not getting those, you're not seeing those anywhere. Like they're not in your junk filter or spam filter or marketing or promotions folder or whatever. Send us an email at support at malwalk.com. Let us know. Or or Gmail accounts are good. Uh, you know, or, or maybe if you've got another email address and you want us to to swap you out and change your, your address. I think we can do that as well. If we can't do that, we'll certainly be able to give you a button or something to push. But just wanted to let you know, and uh, I, I it's good to see you. I, I, I noticed you said you have a, I don't know if my chat, hang on, if I'm not on the right, oh, I think I think maybe it was on the top chat. Kara, you know what, I, I flip, you know, I, I don't know why YouTube does this. Um, I I don't now I don't even see Varun's messages. Can you let me know? I have Evelyn O at uh, let's see at at six twenty seven a.m. Can you let me know if I'm I'm now missing anything? Let me let me know if I'm I'm right because I want to go I want to go to the questions here. Evelyn's first. Okay. So anyway, just a, a little bit of news on that. I've got um, one other announcement. We've got a, a free workshop coming up on October 8th, 10th, 15th, and 17th. It is a four banger on job interview communication. I think I have endearingly made the tagline or subtitle advanced interpersonal skills that get you hired. And it is all about the, well, verbal and nonverbal communication presentations and those kind of things, rapport building. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to give a presentation, uh, body language, those kind of things. The other one's escaping me. I know, wait, hang on, body language. Oh, being confident when you don't know the answer. I got that one in there too. But it, 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 it's, it's cool, four-day series. We're going to be running on Tuesday and Thursday at 11 Central Time. So mark your calendars, the, the splash page, landing page, you know, overview page, whatever you want to call it, be going up soon. Evelyn, my boot camper from New York, great to see you. Adam Stark, I'm going to start charging you rent on my YouTube channel, my friend. Let me give you your own personalized, uh, you know, pay button. Mm. Just joking, my friend. Always appreciate that you're here. Actually, I quite love people who are always with me. All right, amazing video today, Andy. I initially didn't have a question, but are you able to give some more examples of points two and four from today's video? Well, um, I would say the easiest way to, to, to check out points two and four are, um, you know, kind of the, the words are worth a thousand words. I don't know, picture's worth a thousand words. I, in the video today, folks, um, and, and Adam, this, this is to your question, I did show you the 10, what I think are the most potent, the, one, the ones you have to have readily available the templates for these for these networking messages and I actually wrote them all for my job search boot campers. So if you're in my job search boot camp, you get this awesome packet of these 10 emails. Now, if you're not in the boot camp, there are one or two of them that are in the packet that you have access to publicly. Those are my boss hunting cover letters. I've written a boss hunting cover letter where you are trying to get into an organization you are um, w within that organization. You are trying to, to target a particular individual that you think is either your boss or is a senior person within that organization who may manage the area that you are uh, that that you that you are suitable for. In the event that you're able to locate that individual, 
you might know if the individual has a job opening and one is publicized or where you don't have a, a job opening and it's not publicized. I've given you a couple of templates that I've written the copy for and points two and four are addressed in there. Why are you reaching out to, the, to, to, to me? Okay, you're reaching out to me because you noticed my background, you noticed that I might be managing this particular area or, or it's possible I'm managing this particular area and so forth. And then there's some spe specific thing about interest in the company, research that you've done, or anything related that basically shows that extra step that you took. So, so keep keep that in mind. Grab those if you do not have them, and uh, I, I think those will illustrate the points. Steve, I'm ready for coffee, man. I, I got a, a little less sleep last night than I normally do because the bears were on up past my bedtime. I even for, I just noticed. I forgot to change some settings on my computer that I always said. So hopefully I will drop the stream this morning. By the way, if that ever happens, refresh. Give me a second. We'll 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 reconnect this stuff. Mm. Um actually, Varun, here this may be this may be the question you were asking me when I went off about the hotmail thing. Does it make a difference on your resume if you use hotmail or mail address? As I was told, Gmail is preferable and not as dated as Hotmail. Grazie, as always, buddy, you are uh, you are welcome. I love having you. For everybody, if if Andrew La Civita was gonna search for a job, I would use a Gmail email address. This is not overly concerning. If you want to use a Yahoo. If you want to use a Hotmail, we see people with AOLs. We see all kinds of stuff. All I care about are two things. This is very, very important. Number one, your email is recognizable. So I want you to think about when when I'm the recruiter and I want to type in, uh, you know, Steve G, Adam Stark, Varun uh, Varun Pandey. When I type that in. It, I want I want to be able to just type your name and I want your email to pop up or or as I start communicating with you what happens is when you send me an email if 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 you if you do not have your name associated with your email and I see in my inbox this happens when people in the Mile Walk Academy email me I just told my boot campers this last week it's important that you have your name associated because I pride myself on learning you, your names, who you are, what you do, and so on. Well, a recruiter that's interacting with you is going to be getting familiar with you as well. When your email comes in and I see MRGC0129, I don't know who that is And at AOL.com. I don't know who that is. So it's, it's, it's important that you are coming in visibly to me and I know, oh, that's Adam Stark. That's Steve G. That's Varun Pandey, right? Like you, you want to make that connection. You, 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 you. Every little time you're on their mind, well, hopefully, will likely help helps. But when I look at your when I look at your resume, it's going to be a lot easier for me to just see, you know, Steve G five at gmail.com. I'd rather see that. And if there's other Steve G's or Adam Starks or whatever, then you just you know just add a number. Add your birth year, add whatever, you know, whatever your favorite numbers. I don't really care. People get that. But I just, it's, 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 it's nicer when you do, when you do that, when you do that. Okay. All right. Let me see. Where are we at? Adam Stark, great question. What is the video you refer to in the 14 day challenge boost regarding the best and fastest companies list? So for everybody, there, when you need something of a particular type of approach, I have a job interviewing playlist, I have a resume tips playlist, I have a cover letter playlist, I have a salary negotiation playlist, I have a career changer playlist, and I have a job search playlist. Go into the job search playlist and you will likely find videos like how to create a target company list for your job search. You will also find a video that talks about how to use the best and fastest growing companies. It might be titled Job Search Tip 
best and fastest growing companies or something like that. Kara can probably drop it in there. It's, a, it's an oldie but goodie and a shorty because I, I show you how to get at those lists. Now, if you are in the boot camp, we have compiled uh, a list of all of those um, that, well, that we could think of that were reasonable for all the, all the lists that show the best, the fastest growing, the best in their industry, best healthcare companies, best small consulting companies, best large consulting companies, best international consulting. Like we, ha we have them all across, you know, best consumer products, goods, Wh whatever there are. There's a, many, many lists that you can use to figure out uh, organizations that you could potentially work for, whether they have posted jobs or not. Keep in mind, companies get on those lists for a couple reasons. One, they're growing and they're doing well. Number two, they pay to be on those lists, just so you know. So let's not be all, you know, gaga over these lists. But it's an asset for you. That's all I care about. And it's a good asset for you. Look at the Inc. 500. Look at the Inc. 5000. Look at those kind of things. So, so check, check those out. And then Kara maybe can drop that in. Carrie Freeman, hey, congratulations again. Hey, Colette. Colette from Chicago, my boot camper, great to have you. And so sorry we missed you at Chicago Meetup a week or so ago. Maybe that was 10 days ago or whenever that was, but great to have you. Nice communicating with you over the weekend. And Kara's here with me as always. Evelyn, oh, hey, Evelyn, I, I, I think I have an email or two from you in my queue. I will get back to you today, in fact. Uh, on LinkedIn, for your title, you say to describe what you do. Uh, what do you put for career changers? Evelyn, if I were you, uh, when I did your resume review in the middle of the top paragraph, I actually wrote your elevator pitch into the middle section of your career profile. I actually took your elevator pitch, I massaged it, put it in the middle of your career profile, and that's the sentence I want you to use about what you do related to, I mean, because you've got the office management side, you got the HR and admin side, but you've got what it is that you actually do related to the people and the processes, that would be a good one that you can put in your, um, in your, in your LinkedIn, in your LinkedIn uh, headline. Don, my boot camp from Ohio, great. Evelyn O, when scheduling an interview, what is the best day and best time? So, I, I, this is an awesome question and I get asked it a lot. I don't, there's different psychology behind a lot of this. It, there's so many factors that go into when is the best day, when is the best time. Uh, the other thing is there are so many variables that are outside your control. I always say, well, I, I like to send uh, emails as far as applications, emails and cover letters and other types of things like that to people on Tuesday morning after they've gone through their Monday. Some other statistics say, well, you should send it on Monday. I, if I, you could send me yours on Saturday, that'd probably be the best time to send it to me. So, because I'm, I'm continually looking at my emails, but so we don't know all those things. Now, when it comes to the actual interview itself, uh, well, sometimes Fridays are best. People are in a happy mood. Sometimes on Fridays, people are tired. Depends what they did that week. Depends what they're going, if they got a date on Friday night or a big party on Saturday. So it depends uh, what type of interview it is. Is it a, is it a you know, an, an all day uh, one after another on a Friday and you're going from person to person? Is it a Friday afternoon panel interview. So this is my way of saying there is no best date and time. The other element to this is if I'm in the interview process and I'm given the choice, should I go first or last when they say, hey, we're interviewing three candidates on Friday. Do you want eight o'clock, nine o'clock or 10 o'clock or do you want eight o'clock, noon or four or whatever? That's also, um, you know, that that's also, there's so many factors to that. And fact of the matter is that if 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 you're if you're interacting on the same day, it's pretty irrelevant. Other than the only factor that I would consider is the interviewer's stamina. So at four o'clock, that interviewer might be more tired than say at eight o'clock. The other thing about going later in the day is that more stuff can go wrong 
meaning meaning I'm working, my customer's yelling at me, my boss is yelling at me, I don't have this, I don't have that, and so on. At 8 o'clock, that doesn't happen so much. At 8 o'clock, you should be my focal point, and I'm not really thinking about that other stuff. So these are all things you need to consider. Uh, hey, we're going to be interviewing everybody over the next two weeks. Do you want to go on Monday the first week, or do you want to go on Friday the second week? You know, these kind of things. It, it, it really, you know, in, in, in those instances, I like to go in the middle of the pack. I really do. Because first, that's a long time for them to remember. When, when you get to the back end of the second week, that's hard for them to retain everybody else that they've interviewed and who they like best and why they like them best. But in the middle, you get comparisons forward, you get comparisons backward and forward, and it keeps you fresher in their mind. It actually does. Uh, I've noticed this as I've interviewed people and as I've clustered them, uh, you know, when we're recruiting and I'm interviewing a number of people over the course of, say, 10 days, I, I, it's easier for me with the people in the middle. I don't know why that is. I'm just sharing that, you know, so that might be something to consider. But I know I answered a lot there, but I get all those, all those types of questions. Yes, Colette, I know you're from Chi-Town. Billy Collins, how you been, man? Great to see you, my boot camper. Shahir, wow, Andrew, you are looking very nice, beautiful, and amazing video. Well done. Oh, thank you. You know, that video this morning, uh, so when, when you guys see videos that are set like this, these are usually live recorded videos that I clip out for you. When you see uh, videos of me with a very high def camera and all that, that's just me talking to the camera. I don't love those as much because I like interacting with you more. But, uh, but thank you for that. I, uh, I try to give you content in any way that I can. And uh, I'm in the process right now of trying to set something up for us where I can give you a lot more stuff. A lot more free content, but thank you for that. I did really enjoy doing it. Phyllis, great to have you. I'm a new boot camper. I did get your email. I have not read the share your story email yet, but I will this week for sure. Hey there, Rahobs. Hope that's how you say it. Ryan Elliott. Hey, Bjorn, how are you? Bjorn, on this day, I don't know if I got your email. Uh, I don't know what... I, 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 I don't I don't know. I don't know who, who that is. And I don't know what that email is. Hey, Sabrina, happy Tuesday to you. Katerina, how do I reach out to a former internship supervisor who now works for another organization to ask for a referral for an open position in a different department than hers? Katerina, and, and everybody, when you get situations like this, uh, the, the uh, number one, don't overcomplicate this. So you reach out to a former supervisor and you say, think about the networking formula I gave you. Hey, I'm reaching out to you because I really enjoyed working with you and I noticed that you're getting them, boom, right in one sentence. And I noticed that you are currently working at company X, Y, and Z. I was wondering if you would help me because I noticed there is an open position in this department. Would you be up, you know, would you be willing to help me or connect me with the person who is in charge of that position? Boom, done. That's it. Or you can tack on, by the way, uh, I'd also love to reconnect with you on the phone or for coffee if you have a few minutes or whatever. Right. And just and then, you know, because you never know that that former supervisor might have a position coming up that you don't even know about. And, and so that's it. I just gave you the whole script. Loop it back. Twenty nine minutes in. All right. Hope that helps. Adam Stark. Thursday will be a good day. Live off hours. And <laughs> in the rug. rug you know what? I'm not a big soccer follower. I know soccer is very popular. Uh, around the world, I uh, I just I never never got into it. Never got into it. It was uh, you know when I went to high school, they didn't even we didn't even have a soccer team. That didn't even come till till much later after I graduated. Uh, Bjorn, the email was about being blacklisted. So actually, Bjorn, let me let me take this opportunity to um, help 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 you guys. On uh, I get a lot of emails a day, thousands of them, and. 
I, I have a, uh, it's just, just good for you to know because I, I know sometimes you send me emails and I don't always see them or I cannot possibly respond to all of them. Um, I, there, are, there are different kind of lanes, so to speak, of emails that I get. There are emails that I get that are uh, support emails, meaning somebody in the Mile Walk Academy, uh, a paying member of one of my programs, has a question about an interview, about a resume, about a job search, about a negotiation, or whatever. Uh, There's a system that we use that sends me emails. I get those. Those go into a queue for me to be a customer service Andy, or there's customer service Kara, and we answer those. There's our support at milewalk.com emails where somebody has trouble with their account or, hey, I'm trying to get logged in or I need to change my credit card or whatever it is or I want to join one of these programs. That goes into a different bucket. We address those. Those are the highest priority emails that I get. There are uh, boot camper emails where I want them to share me personal uh, with me personal stuff. Those go into a different link. Then there's, I send you my regularly uh, scheduled digests. Uh, Those go out. Sometimes people respond to them. I try to read those. I can't always respond to those. There's my welcome emails that I send to you guys. So anytime any of you newly join my email list, we send you a welcome email. It says, hey, this is me. Tell me about you. People respond, I read those go into a queue, I read those. I have set times throughout the week to read the welcome emails because some people are introducing themselves. I wanna try to get to know my community, where you're from, the issues you're facing because the issues you're facing help me figure out what we should be teaching you guys and, and offering up in the way of free content, videos, webinars, and so on, and I read those. Now, if I get an email where somebody is asking me for support that is not in one of my programs, We can't possibly, so imagine all those other emails I just described. It's very difficult for me to get back to to everybody. And the thing I was mentioning about having your name and your email address, if I can't figure out who you are, so like if I, do you know how much time it takes for me to get an email with a long email and then look at the email address? And if I don't know if that's a person in our programs, I have to cut that email out, put it into a system, see if you're a paying member. And so I'm spending a lot of time doing this and lots of times things get lost in the shuffle. And so if we can't match your email up with what's inside our system, we can't we can't possibly support you. I offer so much free time on Tuesdays and Thursdays as well as on my YouTube channel. I do my best to answer all my YouTube comments if they're if they're reasonable requests. If you give me a book, it's harder uh, obviously harder still. So that's just a a brief peek into into my world. And I do my best to respond. If uh, if you are a paying member of the Mile Walk Academy, you should be going into the system because the system gives me a high alert email, and I answer every single one of those, every single one. So uh, if you sent me a, a message about getting blacklisted, I don't remember that, and I don't know what that is. But if you put that on the, if you're a paying member, go into the Kajabi system, the Mile Walk Academy system, and enter it into the comments, and I will get the alert. Or if you're not, uh, you can either ask me here, which I'm happy to do, and answer, and, or go into the comment section on the YouTube channel, and I'll, I'll, do, I'll do my best. I really will. All right, I hope that helps. Marta, we should put it on LinkedIn profile looking for new opportunities. I often see it, and I'm wondering if it is useful. Mm. Marta, love this question, and it is not a great idea. Let me, let me just share with you why. So when so a couple of reasons. The the LinkedIn headline that you're speaking about where it's giving you an opportunity to describe yourself however you want. The greatest thing that you can do for you is to put in words that people will search on, recruiters, hiring officials, staffing organizations, where they are looking for somebody with your background. Are you a project manager, a business analyst, whatever you might be, an engineer? Because most of the people who are searching for talented people like yourself are searching on keywords. If you put in your headline looking for opportunities, nobody, and I mean zero people, zero percentage of the world searches for looking for opportunities. They don't. They don't. Not only do they not do that anymore, there's two things that's really important about that. If you are truly looking for opportunities, 
most of the world who is searching for you and you're hoping to be discovered has a package called LinkedIn Recruiter. It is a way for them to see uh, and access individuals who are in fact looking for other opportunities because there are settings on your LinkedIn profile that you can actually change to let the recruiters and other people know that you are open to new opportunities. Now, if you are in fact looking for a new opportunity, you don't have to be bashful about presenting that to the world. You don't have to worry about making sure that your recruitment settings are set to, yes, I want recruiters to contact me. And you can put in the comments behind the scenes of your LinkedIn profile for the recruiters or people who have this premium package in LinkedIn. I am open to new opportunities and whatever. You can write whatever you want. I would not, however, put it on my title because when they start searching, if the, if you do in fact come up and they see your picture, hopefully you have a picture, and then the next thing they're, they're going to they're gonna see your picture first, and the next thing they're going to see is your LinkedIn title. And then looking for new opportunities, you might think that that makes you attractive to the recruiters, but in a lot of cases, it doesn't necessarily. They would prefer people who are employed. Some recruiters are funky about that. Other recruiters say, oh, no, no, if she's looking for a new opportunity, that's great because she's available. Other recruiters will say, if she's looking for an opportunity, why is she looking for an opportunity? Is she not a good employee? All that stuff is bunk anyway because every situation is, is unique and you could be looking for opportunities for any one of a zillion reasons, right? You could have been the best employee in your unit that was just entirely let go by your company because they disbanded one of the arms in their company. Who knows? Maybe you're a college student that just graduated and you're looking for your first job. That makes sense, right? So anyway, I do not like putting it in the headline. I like putting descriptive words in your headline. One of the things I would suggest that you check out is my video on how to get noticed on LinkedIn. It is a very, very good look at how to run your profile and operate LinkedIn. So this is not, oh, you know, fill in all this stuff and make it all look good and put your, there's some of that in there, but it's about the dynamic nature of LinkedIn and how you truly are found with LinkedIn's algorithm based on data LinkedIn has given all of us that's buried in the bowels of their help text. And so I've, I've put it, I've, I've extracted it, I've packaged it and presented it to you, follow the protocols and you will start to elevate the views on your profile and that will help. So I hope, I hope that helps. I know that was kind of a long answer to that, but I think that's really an important one. It's a great question. To Crash, great to, great to have you. Ryan Elliott, hey, those services may have pre-filters that are flagging as spam before they even get. For sure, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Hotmail, we've had trouble with forever. So I don't know, I, I don't know why, that, why that is, but you know, those Microsoft people. Steve G, hey, Sally Garcia? From the Netherlands, great to have you. I don't recognize your name. Maybe you're a first timer. Connie Cotter, how are you? My boot camper, my leader, my all around great gal. Sabrina Williams, should I edit my career profile for certain jobs? I feel like the career profile markets my experience in one role for the past seven years. However, I have a lot of transferable skills for another. Sabrina, you are welcome. In general, my statement is you are welcome to alter your resume as you see fit the more you can tailor it to particular jobs. Do not lose, do not make sure that the spirit of who you are and what you want is not is not gone. That's all. But I I have you are welcome to do that for sure. Practical inspiration. Thank you for your comments on my YouTube channel this morning. Don't you people think I don't read these things? I appreciate that. Looking great. Kim Brody, hey. Did what was that? Didn't like my new temp job. Back in the job search. Great to have you, Diana Dembski. You, <laughs> you are gonna forever now be known as our beloved Diana Dembski, the super hit at the Chicago meet and greet. Ooh, yes, two crash. Love my bears. All right, Captain Twenty Twenty. Is it cool to inmail people you don't know? If you think they are a decision maker in a job you are interested in, Captain 2020, that is cool as ice. Uh, I I love doing that, and the uh, I would just send you right to my boss hunting uh, cover letters. Just t go to my channel and type boss hunting in the search bar, and there should come up a video on uh, with some cover letter templates 
and basically how to boss hunt and all that good stuff. And that's what I would do for sure. All right. Sally Garcia, it is your first time here. You do not have to uh, be sorry about anything. Do you personally answer email? I personally answer email, yes. However, I'm glad I just got done spending a few minutes mentioning how I go through my email. And I hope everybody appreciates that it is literally, it, it's, it, I'm not going to use the word impossible because it, it, anything is possible. I could answer every email that comes to me. I get thousands a day. So imagine that. And all the work that I do and all the time I spend with you live and all the videos I create and the webinars and the programs and all that stuff. So it's it's impractical for me to be able to answer everybody's email, but I actually read them. I I, I, I read them. I just don't always have time to to respond, but I always like to hear from you. And it, the, the emails that we always respond to are the ones that need help to be directed to something so if you so like somebody emails me the other day they say hey Andy I'm new to your community I'm a military veteran I've been you know in the military for 18 years I'm looking for uh, you know a, a new job and so on I'm hoping to learn thanks for reading my email so I respond to that person and say hey great to have you thanks for sharing head over to my blog where you should type in military veteran and then up is going to pop a post and I have a free ebook that I wrote just for you. Go do that and check that out and you might enjoy these other things as well. Boom. Hey, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Great. Got a book for you too. Hey, I'm having trouble interviewing. Okay, here, go check this out. So like I'm I'm I try to make sure the reason I ask you for for what your what issues you're facing is so I can immediately get back to you and say, "Hey, Check this out. I have aids for you. When people say to me, okay, I'm really struggling. I'm now this. I lost my job. I'm not sure what to do. Do you have any suggestions? I can't do anything with that because I don't, I wouldn't even know how to direct you. So those don't get answered. I appreciate them sharing, but they've not given me any insight or been specific enough about what it is they need. So if the more specific you are, the faster I can respond and I do. And so, so I, I do look at that. And then, and then Kara monitors the support at milewalk.com email as well. And then she reviews all that as well. And either she responds or I respond. But regardless of who responds, I read the stuff because I want to know what's going on out there. Jim Keen, hey, Andy, I am about to accept a job offer today. Jim Keen, I'm not even going to read the rest. Of the, I will read the rest of this, but I want to give you congratulations. Can everybody here at our Careers and Coffee give Jim Keen a big round of applause and, and good luck on his job offer. Anything I should ask at the time, yes. Already have benefits, FAQ, salary, bonus. Thanks for your guidance. It helped me lock this great opportunity. Love it. Jim Keen. So when you get the offer, you need to ask them if there's any wiggle room and plant the seed that you want to come back and counter. Now, there are many variations of what you need to say based on their reaction but I would highly recommend that when we get off this session in 17 minutes, that you go and check out my salary negotiation playlist and check those videos out because that will help you, that will help you in the process. The, the more important thing for you, while I do want you to get paid what you deserve and I do want you to realize the most money that you possibly can as, a, as is reasonable in this particular transaction that you're going to negotiate your salary. What I really hope that you do, because it's more important for me that you are in the right job with the right company for you, is I have a video out there about, um, about I think it's eight questions to ask before you accept any job. Maybe Kara can put that in the, in the chat. And really what I hope is that you watch that video and make sure that all of those things that I share with you that you should know or that you should have asked them so that you have the answers so that you can ask yourself if this is true, if this checks off this box, and so on. It's very specific. It's very prescriptive. I would, I would recommend watching that video and going from there. And that will help you determine if you're making a good decision and if the company is solid and if you were going into the right area and if it's strategic and so on. That I would check out. That's, that to me is even more important 
than ringing out a few bucks. I mean, it's, but I, I want you to, uh, but I, I want you to counter no matter what, unless it's so over the top huge that it would be like borderline insulting. Charlene Crocker, hey, yes, you are. And I was going to say, congratulations, didn't you just get a job? Start still waiting on my official offer start date, but doing a standalone project for that person that I'll be working on until I can start. Awesome. You are welcome. Love having you. Esther, when a recruiter emails and asks what my availability is for a 30 minute screen interview, do they expect because whole all day or should I give times like 10 to 2? That is a great question. I don't know that. Kara, actually, tell me, I don't know that I've ever been asked that. And actually, that's a dang good one. So what you, all you need to do, and this is my suggestion, when you get a request for a time block and they've given you the time block, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, three hours, I need you for the afternoon, whatever, you want to give them as many options as possible, Okay. It's very important. Don't don't go back to them and say, I'm open from 10 to 10.30 on Tuesday. That's no good. You need to give them, I, what I like to do is give them an entire week. So if, let's just say, sake of argument, Esther, you got the email this morning, it's Tuesday. And they said, hey, we'd like to, get, we'd like to do a screen interview on the phone. I'm assuming 30 minutes. Um, can, you, can you give me your availability? I would immediately give them Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, every imaginable option they could have in whatever form you need to. On Wednesday, I can do any time in the morning. On Thursday, I can do any time between 1 and 3 and 4 and 5. Or I, Friday, wide open. Monday, whatever. You know, Give them any which way. Yes, I can. No, I can't. Any times, but whatever. That's totally okay. Just make sure that you've given them enough time. If they say, give me two hours, you got to literally give them at least two hours in the blocks you're citing. That's the best way. Then what I would say is, that's all my availability right now. You know, Please get back to me as soon as you can because my, my schedule does, does change. But at the moment, those are all my available times. Now, if they get right back to you, that's awesome. If they get back to you three days later, your Monday schedule or your Tuesday schedule might change. You do not need to be embarrassed or feel badly about that. You just get back and say, I'm no longer available at one o'clock on Monday. Here's my other options. And then you give them the whole next week. Monday, this, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So you just, you want to make sure that you are giving them as many options to work with. I laugh when people say, can you talk at 10 o'clock on Wednesday? I mean, it's just, it's nuts. The fact, the pr probability of that happening is absolutely no. So, um, so make sure you give them a lot of options. All right. Let me see here. Zipping down. Sea Lion. I remember that handle. All right, Na Naeem, 2602, recently moved to Hamburg, Germany and don't know anyone here, no job yet. How would you go about building a network in a new city, new country? I'd go about that the same way I would go about building a network in my city, in my country. And I would point you to, and Kara can drop this in if she's got it handy, but how to network when job searching or something like that. I have literally a job search networking video I also have a building professional relationships video, so business networking on an ongoing basis. So I would I would definitely check those out for sure. And as a matter of fact, if you, I'm pretty sure that in the description of this live stream, or maybe it was just the video this morning. Actually, let me let me be certain. The video that I put out this morning with you know set um, how to craft the perfect job search networking message. If you go into the description, all, a lot of networking videos that I've created are in there. The ones I just referred to are in there. Just click the links or, or Kara could drop you know, a couple of them in, in here. Dania, I think that's how you say your name. Great to have you from New York. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know rugby. I've played it a little bit. Alex, hey. 
BC question. If you accepted an offer at a company and end up not starting working there, do they flag you for future opportunities as they do ask when you apply if you've ever interviewed at their company before? Alex, it depends on how you break their heart. So I, 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 cause I know your situation. I'm speaking to you here, not the whole group. I would, uh, I would do what I told you yesterday on the phone and then, and then, you know, just let them know that you're still sorting it out and you, you still have follow-up questions. And that even though you accepted the offer, you know, because you, you had that tight window to do that, that you, you, you want to review some things with them, use that opportunity to ask your questions and use that opportunity to break up with them. That is, that's appropriate if you're doing it based on new information that is easier to swallow than I'm going to start on, you know, October 1st and then you're just not showing up or you calling them on September 30th and saying, I'm not coming. So I would, I would, I would do, I would do that. And yes, it will be in the system. I would not be overly concerned, especially due to the size of the organization in the different divisions and all that good stuff. You just want to make sure that you are uh, uh, very specific in this case, only because of the situation you've been in, that you want to be very specific that, that you're giving them the rationale why you're not coming. The other opportunity that surfaced is more in alignment with the industry, the technology, the entrepreneurial nature. I want to work for a smaller company, whatever it is that is anything but. Don't, I wouldn't worry about it. And then what happens is over time, people, people's first off, people are, are gone. They they leave, and then when they look back, you just want to make sure that they that you didn't do anything completely foul that they would that they would blacklist you. So that's what I would say there. Go back with the formula I gave you yesterday. Colette, I replied directly to your welcome email and request for my story. Do I need to redirect it? Colette, you do not because it is safely in my inbox and it is put in its appropriate spot and there's time on my calendar to read it. And I look forward to that. Steve St. Clair, another boot camper. Hey, how are you? Good morning. I interviewed for a good position. Didn't get the job. What are your thoughts trying to debrief from interviews? Uh, Rocky Mountain boot camper. Yes, and actually, and you are now a leader, so you can put the pound leader tag on there if you'd like to. Uh, So... I have uh, mixed emotions about trying to get feedback from interviews. Let me be very, okay, let's, let's kind of take, Kara, Kara, do me a favor. I, I, I want to shoot a video on this one. Okay. This is, this is really a great question. And I think a lot of people, uh, they drive themselves nuts. Here's the practical reality of all of this. So should I, so Steve's asking, I had a good interview. I didn't get the job. What are your thoughts on trying to debrief from the interviews? So I have mixed emotions on this. Let me tell you why. I love feedback. I think we all can learn from feedback. Whether we agree with the feedback or not agree with the feedback, the important thing is whenever you get feedback in any aspect of your life, I think it's important for you to look at why the person thinks what they think. Okay, so so why do you think I'm like that? Why do you think I don't have those skills. Why do you think? That is the most important aspect. What they think is not nearly as important as why they think it. Okay, just file that for your life. Okay, so because your interpretation of the world and their interpretation of the world are completely different based on our histories, our biases, and all that other stuff, that psychological mumbo jumbo that I'm not going to get into, but that that's, that's different. The most important thing for you is what drove them to think what they think. Now, that's for life. In a job interview, I think that that's important and you can ask that. However, I do not you I do not want you running yourself ragged worrying about their interpretation of you based on some 30 minute hour, 2 hours worth of time in a compressed interview where they're talking a lot, you're talking some, right? And it's very difficult to get a crystal clear picture of you. So I make an assessment on you when I'm the interviewer and I have to put in a lot of assumptions. And so then I make an interpretation. Are you the right fit? Do you fit with the culture? Do you have enough experience in my products, in my services? Uh, Do I think you'll present well in front of my customers? Whatever. I have to draw those conclusions. Now, my, my conclusions 
That's important. Obviously, you want to know what I'm thinking. However, when you ask me or, or the HR person or the recruiter for that feedback, the likelihood that you are going to get feedback that is truly valuable to you, meaning stuff that you can work on or stuff that is an accurate assessment, is almost nil. So what a lot of job seekers or candidates do is they, they say, well, why didn't I get hired? Why, why, why? And then what often happens is you don't get the honest answer and then you drive yourself nuts. Why would they think that? I thought I answered those questions correctly and so on. So, and oftentimes it's not really a, uh, a good piece of feedback from somebody who doesn't really know you and hasn't had a chance to observe you over a lengthy period of time to draw what I consider to be accurate conclusions based on inform and, and informed uh, decisions or informed assessments. That's why I don't love people trying to seek a lot of feedback from a company who didn't hire them. Now, I do think it's a good idea to, however, I have one huge caveat here. At the end, if you did not, so in your case, Steve, if you did not get the job what I think is vital for you as job seekers to get is, why did I not get the job? That's different. Okay, that's a little different. Did you choose somebody who had more experience? Did you, did you decide not to fill the position? Did you feel I was just not culturally aligned? Okay, why didn't you think that? I'll, I'll take that feedback if you offer it. The reason you want to get these kinds, uh, this kind of insight is because this is going to help you determine how you should exit the interview process. So if you get uh, informed that they chose somebody who um, was just uh, had more experience, fine. If they would say to you, hey, Steve, we really would have liked you to have a little bit more experience using this product, fine. It, anything along those lines, that is a golden opportunity for you to use to check out the video, how to get the job after being rejected. And then I'm not going to go into all that, but check out that video because what that'll do is it will tell you how to communicate with them and, and what to say to them on that exit where it leaves the door open for you to circle back with them at a future point when, you know, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days later, you want to check to make sure that the person they actually hired still worked out. If you, if you do go off and get that additional insight that they were hoping for, we'd like you to have more project management experience. You know, maybe you go off, you have another three, four months of that. Maybe you got your PMP certification, whatever it is. Hey, I wanted to let you know I've got more experience in this area now. Just wanted to check in with you. So you can do those things. If you did something where they're never going to want to hire you because culturally you simply do not fit, you, you might not even know that. They might, not, they might not give you that specific information, or they might. So I think that kind of feedback is great. Uh, that's all I would ask. Just say, hey, listen, I understand how these things go. Is there any um, you know, rationale you can share with me about why you, you, you chose somebody else or why you didn't think I was a good fit for your company? I would just ask it and see what you get. That's it, but I would not drive myself crazy and try to learn a whole lot from these people who spent very little time with you. You follow me? So I, I, I hope that helps. I think that's a phenomenal question. I want to make sure I mark, I mark that because I, I, I want to shoot one of those for you that where I can actually give that some thought, give you the prescriptive formula, but that's really what I think about that. And so that's a, that's a phenomenal question. I, I know I get a lot of people on the YouTube channel and even in the, in the private sessions and stuff it's like, I don't know what I did wrong. Lots of times you didn't do anything wrong. You might not have you know, sold yourself as well as you could. You might not have, have highlighted your value. You might not have been in, in answering their questions with what they expected. Doesn't make anything wrong with you. So, so I hope that helped. Loved your LinkedIn headline advice. Oh, you're welcome to Crash. Andy Perez. Boomer Andy, I didn't get the job that I interviewed and had the exercise, but I sent a counter offer to a job offer that I received. Awesome. Gulls, gulls. Studying computer science in Germany since uh, for seven years now. Probably won't get a degree. I am struggling really bad right now. I am 30, have like no work experience related to my study. What should I do? Gulls, gulls, check out my interview and how to get the job when you lack experience. That will get you where you need to go. Andy, how do I follow up with my interviewer? I sent her resume last week, and she said we can probably meet this week, but I haven't heard from her yet. Uh, Karan, I think it's Karan or 
Maybe it's Karen. Uh, I uh, so it, when you say the interviewer, it sounds like you don't don't have not had an interview yet. If you sent your resume last week, if that's the case, if you sent it last week, I would wait about seven days. And I would just say, hey, I just want to check back in on this to see if um, if you've made any determination or if you have any idea of when we might be able to speak. That's it. Seven days. Just And then just respond. Isis, hey. Sabrina, you're welcome. Evelyn O, if you've been unemployed a few years and it's reflected in your work experience on LinkedIn, will recruiters be turned off? Evelyn, what I would do in your case is I would put... Um, if you want, what you could do is you could take your schooling and put that, uh, I know it, it normally goes in the education section. Uh, what I would do is I would probably raise it into your summary and say, you know, for the last four years have been earning my undergraduate degree, got, you know, attained it in and so on and put that in your summary. I wouldn't worry too, too much. And in your case, you should be targeting companies. Don't, so most of you i want you to i want you to uh how do i say this you think about the probability and odds of you getting your job if you do not know what those are check out my job search master class uh it, you can access it on the front page of the mile walk academy in the middle video of the three-part video series i break down the different percentages of how you are likely to get your job and what you should be doing why am I talking about this? Well, in Evelyn's case, Evelyn is a career changer. She has a, a new degree, recent, but she also has a lot of very good experience. However, the likelihood for Evelyn and anybody else that she could be found on LinkedIn to get her job statistically is 8%. However, in Evelyn's case, it's probably lower just because of her her uh, you know last 10 years of history so that's probably lower but even if it wasn't let's just say say she's statistically average eight percent but in Evelyn's case in her extreme case she has a 60 percent chance of getting a job through somebody she knows predominantly because she's a, a, a mild career changer it's more of a career pivot and she's returning to the workforce after a layoff so Evelyn, you should be spending almost two-thirds of your time networking and almost none of your time worrying about the LinkedIn profile once you get that thing set up. So for all of you to learn from, you know, kind of the teaching point here is make sure you are spending your time in the right places and you're focusing on the right things where your mental energy is being expended on the things that are actually important. Most of you because of the demographic of my community, because I am familiar with what you know, what my demographic looks like, geographically where you're located, your age ranges and so forth, most of you would be better served networking and focusing on the job search challenge that I have, the 14 day challenge and doing those activities. And as a matter of fact, if I could only pick one thing to focus on, it would be the 14 day challenge and do nothing else. And actually you'd probably be better served all of you just doing that. Just doing that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with the 14-day challenge, maybe Kara can pop it in the, in the chat. And Kara, use the, uh, use the third day of the Job Search Accelerator, whatever we, whatever we called that day. It's, the, it's that uh, video, because we had a technical issue, was broken into two videos. Just give them the first one. And that has the teaching portion. And it gives you the challenge, and it answers, uh, the, <laughs> funnily enough, if that's even a word. Uh, hey, it's early, man. Uh, it, it, it not only gives you the challenge, I tell you the problems you're going to have and how to solve those too. All that's in one video. It's about maybe 30 minutes. Um, I can't even remember what I called that video, but that's that that's the one you want to watch. And Evelyn, and that's and in your in the boot camp at the end of uh, module three, that's what I would I would focus on. All right, let me see if I can get one more in here, and then I got a quick announcement. Stephen, great. Steve G, Andy, two crash. Yeah, I love all those. Congratulations. Eight questions you ask before you take any job. That's, yep, that's the one. Check out the networking uh, videos. Awesome. You're welcome, Jim. Esther, go with me on this one, dear. 
Jeffrey Hay. Kim Brody, I, you know what? I wish I would have said those seven things. 30 minutes does not make a person. Folks, do not let, let these people drive you nuts. A- ask, see what you can get out of it, move on. Don't, don't, don't be spending a lot of time worrying about it, really. So that goes back to you, Steve. Charu, I'm, uh, hi, Andy, I'm sending emails to startups top management to work for them. Love it. I noticed that the subject line could be of importance. How should I frame it so that at least the email is open by people? Charu, I, so don't over, any of you, don't, so let's back up. I am in a major part of my business is email marketing in delivering content to you and in order for me to number one help you at all i got to get you to open my email number two for me to help you on the deepest level and get you into my shows here or get you into the premium programs or whatever it is for my business i need to get you to open the email and i have to build a relationship with you in order to do that i have to make sure that my subject lines agree with what's inside it's not what they call clickbait just to get you to open it and then the email's nothing about that all of that stuff's highly sensitive and i need to sweat that okay it's very important i stay up late thinking about this stuff for you charu and a lot of 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 the rest of you where you are sending a unique email to top management at a company, especially a startup, there is a great likelihood that they will read it, that they actually will open it. So what I suggest is that you don't do anything cheeky. Just put something nice and professional. I'm you know, interested in working with you or, or um, you know, in, inquiring about your company. Just something very plain and boring is okay because the email is likely to get opened and then what you say inside that email is more important so you know interested in connecting on whatever it is um, just anything that is related to you and why you're reaching out to them it does not have to be overly creative because it's gonna they will not recognize your name they will likely open it then they're gonna see what it's about and then you want to make sure that, that your email is thoughtful and then it takes on the principles that I, that I highlighted today, those seven, those seven components. Because e- even, even for your cover letters, the cover letters is a networking message in my definition. It has to have those seven components, more or less. I mean, I'm not talking about the obligatory, I have to put this in the applicant tracking system type cover letter. I'm talking about, I'm using a cover letter as a networking vehicle. Don't worry about the subject line too much. It's really, it's not nearly as important as you would think. Marcus Hay, thanks again for the video, my man. I will reply to you. All right, let me see. Steve, you're welcome. Uzoma, hey, how you doing? All right, D, let me try to get D's in, and then I want to tell you about the workshop, free workshop. Hi, Andy, there are several similar positions advertised in one city for the same employer, but different locations, offices. Do you recommend applying to more or only one of them? D, here's my, here's my suggestion on that. If you have a little bit more information about the organization, meaning, hey, it looks like there's one recruiter in, you know, Illinois or Chicagoland or wherever you are, and, uh, I think that that person is probably responsible for all these positions. I like you to target that person and say, I noticed you have several positions located in Chicagoland, wherever you are. I feel like, you know, I'd love to apply for these. And instead of applying to all, I figured I'd just send you my resume for your consideration. I'm reaching out because, and so on and so forth. That's one route. The other route is I don't actually have a problem with you applying to all of those. Here's why. You apply to all of those. The employer is likely going to see that you applied to all of them. If they like you, they know, hey, let's just, you know, we'll get him or her, whatever, whoever uh, you are, we'll get him or her in here and we'll figure it out. That's what a lot of employers will do. I think they're just, they're just posting what, what is open. So I don't have a problem with you applying. I would, however, if you do apply to multiple, that you mention I have applied to the other similar positions or same positions of this role in the different geographies because I am open based on wherever your biggest need is and something like that. And I think that's kind of nice. All right. 
folks, real quick, 809, I got to get running. Uh, October 8th, October 10th, October 15th, and October 17th. That's a free four-day workshop on job interview communication. It's going to be about the soft skills the body language, building rapport, making a presentation when you're called on to do that. It's going to be a ton of fun. I am going to have it on the YouTube channel. We'll put the pages up, or I'll put a page up where you can see kind of dates and times and topics and all that cool stuff. Mark your calendars. As speaking of calendars, um, a couple of other quick announcements. If you have not synced your calendar to the Mile Walk Academy calendar, where it shows you all the dates and times and locations that I am available live, I would suggest that you do that so you can keep up to date on that. I am back Thursday at 11 o'clock Central for live office hours, regular time. Next week, there's no live shows. Uh, the week of, oh my goodness, where I don't even know where we are. Uh, but but at the week of October 1st or whatever that is, September 30th, October 1st. That week, Tuesday Careers and Coffee and Thursday Live Office Hours is off uh, because I'll be dedicating myself to building up the content for your workshop, making sure that all that is in order. I got some other goodies and surprises coming, and also we got a boot camp coming starting October 18th. So I, you will not see me at all next week, but I will be back Thursday. So enjoy the video today. Thank you guys for stopping by. If I didn't get to your question, just drop it in the comments section on this video or the other video that I released this morning. Happy to answer them. I, I, I always read them. I always read them, especially on the day they come out, because uh, I, I want to make sure that I'm, you know, you guys are watching them. I want to support you. And uh, if you enjoyed this, click the little like button uh, or the thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you get free videos every week plus my twice weekly live shows, except next week where we're off. Okay, you guys be good. I'll see you Thursday. Take care.